Diagnostic Hystroscopy Diagnostic hystroscopy is performed to make a diagnosis of a symptom. Indications for Diagnostic Hystroscopy Diagnostic hystroscopy is performed for the following reasons. Evaluation of abnormal vaginal bleeding. Evaluation of unusual vaginal discharge. Evaluation of infertility. Location of a missing foreign body, example intrauterine contraceptive device. Evaluation of repeated miscarriage. Evaluation of abnormal transvaginal ultrasound. Evaluation of an abnormal histosulfingogram. Pre-operative evaluation. Post-operative evaluation. Diagnosis and classification of a submucous fibroid. And diagnosis and staging of endometrial cancer. Pre-operative preparation. The best time to perform a diagnostic hystroscopy is just after menses. At this time, the endometrial lining is very thin and not vascular. Usually, no preparation is required. An oral painkiller may be given 30 minutes before the procedure. When a tight cervical os is anticipated, for example in postmenopausal women, a tablet called misoprostol or cytotec may be given orally or placed in the vagina 30 minutes before the procedure. Sometimes, a local anesthetic injection may be given into the cervix before the procedure. How is diagnostic hystroscopy performed? A diagnostic hystroscopy that is performed without any anesthesia as an outpatient procedure is sometimes called an office hystroscopy. A fine telescope attached to a camera is inserted into the uterine cavity via the cervix. In order to have space to visualize the uterine cavity, fluid or gas is used to distend the endometrial cavity. The fluid that is commonly used is called saline. Some doctors use a gas called carbon dioxide to distend the endometrial cavity. The endometrial cavity can be seen on a video monitor. Usually, the patient can see the procedure while it is being done. In some patients, Due to a very narrow internal os, some discomfort may be felt when the hystroscope is passed through it. Fine surgical instruments may be passed into the uterus to perform minor surgery such as taking a small sample of tissue called biopsy of the endometrium, releasing adhesions and removal of polyps. The procedure usually takes between 5 to 10 minutes. Advantages of Diagnostic Hystroscopy since this is an outpatient or office procedure, no admission is required. It is also performed without anesthesia. The cavity can be visualized directly and a diagnosis can be made immediately. Some minor surgery can also be performed at the same time. Minor surgeries that can be performed during diagnostic hystroscopy. A small sample of tissue, also called a biopsy, can be taken from the endometrium. Removal of small endometrial polyp. Removal of a missing intrauterine contraceptive device. Release of endometrial adhesions. This video shows how a diagnostic hystroscopy is performed. Saline is used to distend the endometrial cavity. The vagina is distended with saline and visualized. This is the cervix. This is the external os. The hystroscope is passed into the external os. This is the internal os. There are some adhesions at the internal os. The hystroscope is passed through the internal os. This is the left tubal ostium. This is the right tubal ostium. The tubal ostiums lead to the fallopian tubes.
This is the normal endometrial cavity. The hysteroscope is then withdrawn from the endometrial cavity and the cervix. The next videos show examples of endometrial polyps. This is a small endometrial polyp. It is long with a narrow base. This is another endometrial polyp. This is an endometrial polyp with a broad base. This is an endometrial polyp with a small base. This is a large endometrial polyp. This patient conceived spontaneously after removal of the polyp. This endometrial polyp has many blood vessels on it. It was endometrial cancer. Missing intrauterine contraceptive device. In this patient, the intrauterine contraceptive device thread was not seen. She underwent an office hysteroscopy. There was some difficulty negotiating the internal os. The tip of the intrauterine contraceptive device was seen at the internal os. It was then seen in the uterine cavity. The thread was held and the IUCD was removed. This is another case of a missing intrauterine contraceptive device. This IUCD was a lipis loop as shown in the diagram. It was held and removed with difficulty. This is a large posterior wall submucous fibroid. This video shows a woman with multiple submucous fibroids. These fibroids are near the internal os. She had many submucous fibroids of varying sizes. These videos show different types of congenital uterine abnormalities. This is an arcuate uterus. There is a small shallow septum in the middle of the cavity. This is another example of an arcuate uterus. This is a case of a biconvate uterus. This lady has two cervix and two uterus. The right cervix is flush to the vagina.
This is the endometrial cavity with the tubal ostium of the right uterus. This is the left cervix. This is the endometrial cavity and tubal ostium of the left uterus. The next videos show intrauterine adhesions. This is a small adhesion seen above the right tubal ostium. This lady has adhesions at the internal os. She also had many thin adhesions in the uterine cavity. This lady had a thick adhesion in the uterine cavity. This video shows retained product of conceptus. This patient has complex endometrial hyperplasia. Note the fluffy endometrium and many abnormal blood vessels. This is endometrial cancer. In summary, diagnostic hysteroscopy is a very useful tool in the evaluation of the endometrial cavity when endometrial pathology is suspected. It can be done without anesthesia in an office setting.